Hey everybody, just doing a quick video here to show off some of the tools that I use uh, with a program or a website called CoinGlass. And I generally use these a lot of times in my market updates, my Bitcoin updates, and uh, kind of like the bigger deep dives on TA and stuff like that. So uh, the reason I like it so much, honestly, is that the data is clean, it's fast, and the service is completely free. Now they do have some advanced settings, but what I'm going to kind of focus on is like the things that I use and the things that I think are potentially really helpful to, to traders trying to find direction, some confluence, and effectively uh, build out a strategy that really works for people consistently, right? Because that's the whole point of trading. If it needs to be consistent, repeatable, and profitable. If it's not those three things, consistent, repeatable, profitable, then it's not a strategy that you can implement. So uh, focusing right now just on like the main screen, obviously you've got a lot of data, it's a lot of information, altcoin season index, average hard size, uh, number of liquidations intraday, total open interest. And it's it's a lot, right? It absolutely is, you know, we're looking at the volumes, massive increases in volume for Bitcoin, in ETH, and then, you know, BNB, a Litecoin. But this is just the homepage. Now, if you create a login, uh, you can create a free account and it'll give you access to some of like the more advanced stuff and it doesn't cost anything. Like again, it's totally free and I don't even think there's a ref link or anything. But in any case, this is just an explainer video to show what I use and why I use it. So the first one I want to look at is the long short ratios. And uh, the big thing here, if I just kind of like put it down a little bit, put it on the one hour time frame. So long short ratio chart the top one here that i don't really use too much this is taker buy and sell volume so this is effectively if you're pressing the market button or if you're getting stop lost or liquidated this might also show up in the overall calculation here uh, it's not super important to me like just in general because i i use this primarily for this uh binance is still the largest trading side for crypto derivatives for retail traders and the way I look at it is very simple. Are they looking to majority long or majority short? Now, yeah, there's a fair bit that goes into that calculation when you think about volume. Volume is a huge determinant to whether new positions are being created or old positions are being closed. So uh, for right now, the reason I like it the most is what's the general like temperature check? Like what is retail doing? Well, you know, here we are still in the middle of this kind of crypto dump. 26th of Feb, 2025 uh, was yesterday. Today's to the 27th. And from the high point of almost 75%, almost three to one long and short, you know, in a very relatively short amount of time, we've come down to 68%. So almost a 7%, call it 6% drop uh, in more short stepping in instead of longs. And this might be the beginning of, you know, retail trying to long the bottom, getting mentally exhausted, psychologically exhausted and unable to continue going. But the thing I look at the long short accounts, you know, obviously I'll just, you know, scroll at the bottom here just to understand like, what it is you can screenshot it or pause the video but the whole point in here is like i want to say what direction it's going so if it's coming in short that means most likely the price is going up and the more aggressively they're shorting as price goes up uh, the better it looks like there's going to be short liquidations available if the price starts to say reverse and gain levels now it's still massively more long than short shorts have just been stepping in the last 24 hours so it's very very early there's no confirmation that we're flipping stuff to go higher it's just it's the beginning of something as a change the next thing i look at is the funding rates so uh, two things i look at is the bitcoin open interest weighted funding rate and the volume weighted funding rate and they're both on par at 0 0.002 so effectively the way funding rates work are have you ever heard the term longs paying shorts or shorts paying longs? That's where this comes into play. So a lot of exchanges, actually all of exchanges use liquidity providers as market makers. So basically they, there's people providing like organizations, companies, individuals getting paid to buy in part, provide a certain amount of liquidity, say it's a hundred million dollars uh, in uh, liquidity over the course of a week. So what they're doing is, is like, what way are they incentivizing the price? Now, generally this, this funding rate is designed to keep the perpetual futures price, right, for perpetual swaps on par with the spot price. However, we know that the exchanges will manipulate this in order to get the result they want to. It's a little bit less than it used to be. It was a lot more fun many, many years ago back during the BitMEX days where you could literally just trade funding rates. Uh, but effectively anything over zero, so we're in positive, even though it's saying green, uh, this is incentivizing downside. This is incentivizing 
you know, here's some big, really good ones here, like really, really high funding rates. These are basically long, people who are taking shorts are getting paid a lot of money, like that percentage, every funding period of their total position size to hold that position open. So that's all, always, again, like interesting to me is like, which way are the big guys, the, the volume provide, the liquidity providers, the market makers, which way are they being incentivized to trade? So anything over zero, yeah, it's technically very low. Generally, you'll see stuff like BitMEX usually hovers around 0.01%. It's a little bit lower now. That's kind of like my go-to, just a, it's an old habit. But in general, um, negative funding rates as well provide the opposite. Negative funding rates incentivize long so that, people, so that the liquidity providers and market makers are incentivized to create large long positions. So, and this is how they make their money. They're not specifically, you know, trading to make money. Yes, of course, they, they, that's always the goal, but most of them, like they're providing a service, which is providing liquidity. And the, whichever way this is kind of like tilting, especially when it gets like over 0 0.01 or heavily negative, uh, that's when, you know, significant changes in the market can appear just because you're like on the way down, the liquidity, the, the funding rates were very, very, very high, like very positive. So incentivize a continuation that moved lower. So this is just kind of like, again, if the, if the, if the long short ratio is, is like a temperature check or like a vibe check on the retail traders, the funding rates are like a vibe check on the, the liquidity providers and market makers, the big, the big money. The next thing I really look at is the order book, uh, liquidity Delta. So when you're talking about perpetuals and spot, right, there's an order book, you know, if you're placing orders that are not market orders, they're limit orders, right? You're waiting for a price to, to come to a certain point to open a position that's adding liquidity to the actual book to the order book. So that's where the term maker and taker comes in. So this is making your, when you're, when you're taking limit orders and you're putting limit orders in the, when you're putting in opening new positions as limit orders, you're technically making, you're a maker. If you're hitting the market button or you're getting stopped out or liquidated, that's also like a make, uh, like a taker. So effectively you have limit orders that are makers and market orders that are takers. And yeah, this is maker. So what are they doing now? Well, the top one here is showing the spot on on Bitcoin in general. So there's some spot selling here locally. You know, look at the chart. It looks like we're testing some lows. So there's some spot selling at this area. It's not a bad place to take profit either way. And then on the perpetual side, we're actually seeing an increased uh, liquidity uh, del uh, or in the order book of shorts. So there's short sells above us and perpetuals are shorting as well. And what you tend to find is like when there's, you know, they're both going in the same direction, like heavy, heavy spots at the same time as heavy, heavy perpetuals, whether that's long or short, that kind of just means like that's the general direction that you're looking to travel. And right now, where are you at? Well, use your eyes. You're at resistance. You're at a previous low that you're now testing. That might change if we gain that level, then I would expect that a gain would mean uh, spot and perpetuals look to add longs or, you know, limit longs to go higher. So again, just a, a simple understanding of like what direction is the liquidity? Is it above us or below us? Currently, it's below us. There's or uh, excuse me, above us. <laughs> There's more shorts and sells in the order book than there are longs. On the liquidity heat map, so this is actually pretty cool. This is actually seeing the order book as it is. I'm on the Binance perpetual ticker on the five minute time frame, and what you're able to see here are large blocks of large orders. So at the price point, so here eighty six thousand nine hundred fifteen dollars. There's or $86,900, excuse me, 325, because it's in Bitcoin, 325 Bitcoin are resting as a short, and this is the perpetual. So this is where they're resting basically as like a potential buffer. Are they going to get filled? Potentially. Now, what you tend to find is if there's some smaller orders in here, they'll kind of like guide price. And when you hit bigger blocks, if the price doesn't reverse, now these orders, you know, they've been filled. Now these orders may act as uh, liquidity to go higher. And what I mean by that is actually not liquidity, excuse me, liquidations. And that means that they're in position and if the price goes against them enough, they could get liquidated, right? So here we have quite a bit of, you know, local orders, a couple thousand if we just go down the line, right? And that's the only thing locally that's acting as resistance. This is also, as we just saw on the order book, Delta, right? There's more local shorts than there are longs. That's why the Delta is mostly short because there's more cells, right? Above us than there are longs below us. 
And what does that really mean? It's like, well, this, this might act as a local magnet because the market goes towards liquidity, but in general, there's nothing above it either. So if we start, if we fail to basically gain this to go higher, then we're looking at a local little top to come back down and retest. Now on the higher time frames, we talk about like larger orders. Uh, below us, we kind of jokingly call all of this stuff. This is what we would basically call plunge protection. Uh, these are thousands, tens of thousands of Bitcoin longs stacked in position to potentially hold price. So if you think about it this way, the, if, the, if you have local liquidity close to you, it may act as a magnet. So it'll pull it towards it. People, these guys are large positions. They want to get filled before the price reverses away. Conversely, when you have massive amounts of orders like that we have to the downside, this will act like you know a barrier, like a bumper, and it'll push price away from it. So as long as these are in place, it'll act kind of like a, uh, like we don't really want to go lower because all of these guys would get filled. And what do we know about the market? The majority of people have to lose. So if these guys get skipped and don't get their orders filled, what happens? Well, they'll have to potentially, if they want to long, buy higher, set their orders higher, or they might flip and try to short it. So this is good in the sense that there's plunge protection in place to try and hold price. Going over to the liquidations heat map. So this is actually really cool. I'm using the model three. They've got two, one, and two. And you can access this just by creating a free account on CoinGlass. So this is cool to see because it gives you up to several months, like up to a year's worth of estimated liquidations. Again, this is estimated uh, to get the actual raw data. I think Bybit is actually now providing the raw data. But you know, in the last 48 hours, like, what do we really have? It's like, well, you have a ton of local liquidations just at... Uh, just around 90k. So liquidations and liquidity, there's a difference. Liquidity is open orders, right? As we saw here, these are open limit orders. Liquidations, this is when we're talking about what CoinGlass has, this is the estimated area where X amount, you know, 1.13 million in short positions, right? Because it's above us, short positions would get liquidated. And these these will these will absolutely act like magnets. So when you come down like do a bounce. Are we building liqui liquidations below us? Yes, we're probably gonna do another one until eventually we get some type of reversal. Is there anything super attractive below us? Not really. Uh, if we do start losing levels and coming back into these lows, absolutely, we would go down to try and fill them, get the rest of these liquidations. But again, this is only a 48 hour period. Let's take a higher time frame outlook and just kind of general, you know, check the entire market as far as liquidations. Well, here we have quite a bit still below us if we talk about three month period. If we look at even higher time frame, we'll look at the six month period. And again, you know, there's that big nasty block right down here, down towards 74, where you know probably a billion plus in longs is stacked from about 80k down to about 74k, right? Before it gets effectively anything from 70k down is just a dead zone. The just there's no liquidations there. There's no reason for price to go to that area unless there's a black swan of it. So again, this stuff acts like a magnet, higher time frame. We've been in this area for a long time. And remember, this is estimated. So the longer that the price continues, like we were just in like a hundred day range, effectively, the longer we're in a range or in a move, the less likely that all of these liquidations will still be in place because people take profit, people exit positions, even institutions, high net worths, and, uh, you know, or it, it, it's, yeah, in general, People will take profits after several months. They might hold a position for a very long time if they're swing trading. But at the same time, it's like we're not 100% other than like that's where quite a bit of liquidations might exist. So if we do make new lows underneath what we've just done, you could say with pretty good certainty, we're probably coming back down to test this stuff and to fill that, to fill this, take out these large liquidations before we have probably a market bottom uh, in general. But does that mean we can't reverse here? Of course we can. So as we saw, like let's just go on the weekly. Right, so really a whole lot of below us comparatively to above us. No, there's there's a lot more locally above us than there is below us. To us to really get into the nasty stuff, we have to lose 82k and then lose and like there's a 2k gap where there isn't a whole lot of liquidations locally either, uh, or higher time frame, and then you have to break 80k. If you break 80k, all bets are off. You're probably gonna come back down to 74, uh, 76 at least, but. Until then, it looks okay, potentially, to get a bounce. We'll see how we play that out. But yeah, it's a good way to see like what this liquidations magnet effectively looks like. Uh, another one I don't use as often, but I think it's interesting to say the least. They have a new fu function, and this can be all, all be found on like, the data center. They've got 
the order book, heat map, uh, the order book, the liquidity delta, which I just showed as well, whale orders. This is what I'm on right now. So what do we see here? I'm on Binance, uh, Binance Perpetual. Massive shorts coming in at 89K uh, yesterday, um, early morning yesterday. And then again, massive short orders coming in locally. And just now we're starting to see some, some bigger green ones, but nothing major, like no major buys. So the way to look at this is very simple. If you got lots of overlapping major short, like large sell orders, they're obviously going to influence the price. If you do have some, some large long orders, but then price stagnates and fails to move, this area here, these major longs, will potentially act as uh, liquidation. So if we start breaking down below current price and losing levels, then you start looking at it in terms of, okay, well, there's a lot of, there's some big positions here that'll likely get liquidated if we start breaking down. And that's what happened. So again, it's, it's an interesting one. It's a lot of information, but you know, definitely something to use. And then finally, uh, they have their super charts function. I'll just open that up. I've already clicked it. So if you don't have trading view, again, it's not the biggest deal in the world. I'd recommend it because trading view is free as well. But uh, here we have overall just some good data points coming in. I'm on the one hour cumulative volume delta. So a lot of the things I just went through, you can see it on chart here. So again, definitely cumulative volume deltas to the downside. Uh, aggregate spot cumulative volume. So it's the same thing that if this is uh, cumulative, this is the aggregated spot. We have funding rates. I talked about that as well. Funding rates are still positive, right? So there's a bit of an inversion on the coloring. Positive funding rates influence downside. Negative funding, funding rates potentially show some upside. And then finally, open interest. Open interest is dropping dramatically. Why? We started having major liquidations uh, down once we broke below 90K, and that's still capitulating to the downside. We're seeing open interest effect effectively falling as everyone tried to long the dip for some reason. But it's not all bad. The open interest has just come back to levels we haven't really seen since uh, seven days ago, a week ago. And then at the bottom here, you have bid-ass delta. It's not the biggest thing, but uh, yeah, like like I said, lots of lots of stuff locally. So yeah, that's just a big kind of like run through on CoinGlass. I think it's an awesome service. I use it every day. I just check everything. And um, the big thing here is really simple. Like use what works. Uh, don't use all of these things unless they all of them work for you. I would say pick a couple things that you can read really effectively and add confluence to your trades and to your kind of like general direction for your analysis. Because uh, the last thing you want to do is something called, you know, analysis paralysis, where you get so much data, so many indicators, uh, look at so many different charts to, to try and understand stuff. And it's just too much information to handle. So the only way you should really be using these extra tools is, you know, general market outlook check. How is the perpetual and the, the spot market looking for Bitcoin? And, you know, you can use other coins as well, not just that, but, you know, generally altcoins as well. So that's the number one thing is using the, the, the tools available in order to create a better strategy for yourself overall. So, yeah, check it out. It's awesome. Uh, check it every day. And uh, that's it. Peace out.